we pulled up a couple of days ago and I did a quick check uh, and generally what I do is I just go and fill the hubs on the trailers and the driver side one on the boat was a little bit warm pulled the hub off and inside here you can see there's just markings on the outer race um, and the slightest little mark um, means that the bearing's absolutely buggered um, if we have a look down here in the axle this dark patch here means that the bearing's also been overheating as well uh, it's a bit of a lesson um, make sure that um, when you pull up anywhere is to do your checks um, and if you've got a boat or even your caravan you've been doing some river crossings and things like that um, just grab the outer side of the hub this part here and just feel if it's warm and it basically needs to be cold if there's any warmth in it at all then it's probably worth checking about to change the wheel bearings so in effect this is a roadside bearing change it's a bit of an emergency as such We've actually got to be somewhere tomorrow, so I need to do it now. It's a long weekend, we're in a small town, and we're unlikely to get um, any um, mechanical shop or anything like that open. Interesting thing is, the bearings that I've got are not necessarily standard, so if this had happened and I wasn't able to change these bearings, we'd probably have to wait till Tuesday before we could speak to somebody, and then they'd have a look at it. I'd have to order the bearings in, that would take two or three days and it'd probably be the end of next week before we'd be able to move on. So uh, it's certainly worth, if you're going to tow a boat particularly, it's certainly worth, know, uh, worth knowing how to change the bearings. I'd highly recommend you change bearings before you go on a big trip anyway. Um, and one, one of the things that I do when I'm changing the bearings is the races, you have to punch them out. But what you can do is you run a world around the inside of them and then what that does is that shrinks it and they literally fall out you can almost you cool them off run the world around cool them off with some water and you can almost push them out with your fingers so you can just tap them out and i just run a grinder around the outside and then i use these to help push the new races in as well so you'll see that as we go along all right i'll get started i've got my tools all set up down here First thing to do is take the wheels off. So the wheel's still on the ground, the jack's in place, but there's enough pressure on the wheels so I can start to undo the nuts. And the and the trailer can't roll away, it's still attached to the car, so um, otherwise you'd normally have your brakes on and stuff like that, but we've got to get the brakes off, so um, uh, we don't really want them on. All right, get these wheel nuts off. Next thing to do is get off the brake caliper. Fortunately, there's just two nuts at the back of it to get off. So that's the nut. There's also a bush there. We have to get the dust cover off. There's a nut under there that we have to undo. So I'm locking this out sideways. It's okay. When I pull this off, I'm looking to see if there's any emulsified grease in there. It doesn't really look like anything. But generally, this front bearing doesn't get too many issues the water usually gets in the back of them and there are these things that pump grease special caps that pump grease into them I don't reckon they're any good because what they do is lubricate the front bearing and it's not the front bearing that has any issues 
take the split pin off. So, need to straighten it. there's a couple of washers in there now to me that is looking a little bit white some of that grease so that is a bit of a worry in terms of water getting in so now we've got to get the caliper uh, sorry the, get the drum off so the bearings are coming out now I can see water just dripping out of it yeah, so that means that these bearings are buggered. Any water at all in there, and they're, they're going to be shot. There's also a bit of a smell about them. So I'll put this over here, excuse me. So now what I have to do is get this bearing out of here. Definitely need a pin punch to get the bearing and the seal out of the hub. Whoops, that wasn't meant to happen. Oops. There we go. It's out. have a look at that this stuff here is brown and that means that it's rusty that means it's absolutely buggered all right now we have to knock the races out so again with the pin punch the races are press fit in so what we have to do is hit them either side and slowly get them out fortunately this wheels are still rim so I can use this as a bit of a uh, knocking anvil not to drop this keep the dirt out of it so these are the ones these races are the ones that I'm knocking out at home if I had the world I'd run the world around them and then you just tap them out and they just fall out basically. That's one. Races out as well. Our bearings are really, really susceptible to any dirt and crap, so we've got to really wipe that out before we start putting it all back together again. start to knock the new races in. So it's our new packet of bearings. They've got no grease in them so we have to grease them up and that's our new race. This surface here is perfectly clean, no marks or anything. That's what we're after. So this is a, a press fit, so one of the things I do is I just put a bit of really light lubricant around the outside so that helps it to slip in. So 
So there's a bit of a trick with this and you know it's a skill that you'd have to learn in time but basically you're just getting it to grip and you can hear it ringing a little bit and to get it to go in straight you've got to go all the way around it. Now that's most of the way in and that's where these little things come into their own. These help me get them in the rest of the way. Not to eat your fingers, you don't want blood on your work. And the question is, how do you know when it's actually hit the shoulder at the bottom? If you listen to it, it all of a sudden you get these dead sounds and all of a sudden it starts to ring. So if you're getting closer again, you might be able to hear the ringing. So that's all the way in because you can hear it ringing when you're hitting it. Grab out the big race. Probably something that I didn't mention before is you've got to have the taper facing up. Because if you put the taper up the other way, then you're buggered. You've actually got to knock them back out and then re put them in. So you need to pay a bit of attention to which way the race goes in. So, again, just pushing it in by hand until it feels like it's gripping a little bit, very gently, until it starts to ring a little bit. I'm not smashing it, I'm really just lifting the hammer to here and then just guiding the hammer down and letting the weight of the hammer do it. Uh, if you start really smashing it, you'll you know, get things off at an angle and it'll push in all wrong and stuff like that. So there's a bit of a skill um, and that's why I suggest you do one of these at home before you have to do them on the roadside. Slippery. Now it's actually a little lower than this surface here. Um, so you have to be a little bit careful, you have to actually have your hammer at a slight angle when it lands, so you're not actually hitting this surface here. But again, you're listening for that ring. That's it, that's solid all the way around. So now I have to grease the bearing before we put it in and then put the seal on top of it. I wipe all the crap off my hand. I don't really want to push sand and dirt and grime in there as well. This as a task is a little tedious, but if you don't do it, it doesn't lubricate your bearings properly and you really gotta you really gotta push the grease all the way into the into the actual slots and gaps and stuff like that. What I'm looking for is the grease to come through these little bits here. That means that I've forced it in far enough. A little bit hard to tell by looking on the camera. So that's the top, and then we've got to do the bottom. Same deal.
again, looking for it to come through that little section there. And then I rub it either side of the actual bearing to try and push it in the sides as well. Into the race, I put a, a fair bit on the face of it as well. And what this will do is that'll force some extra grease into the bearing once we put it in. So it just has to sit there. Bit of extra grease in here. I'm going to push the seal face in. That'll help, as I said, push grease through the bearing. So this is uh, a press fit into here. This is the difference between a marine seal and the standard sort of a seal. The standard sort of a seal runs on the actual shaft on the inside here and it wears out really quickly. Every time you replace your bearings, you replace your, um, your seal as well, which is a good thing. This is where I use a soft hammer. And again, it's the same sort of deal. Trying to get it to grip and then slowly tap it in. And just to make it a little bit sure. What I'm doing is hitting the corner of this to get right in the corner of the actual seal. The important part of the seal really is this inside face in here. So the seal has these little three flaps in there. They rub against that and they're meant to stop any water passing in through that. And this one is like a dust seal and that runs on the front face there. You really want to be careful not to make get any damage on any of those parts. I like to put a bit of grease on this. Push it into, into those little areas a little bit. I don't think it does a massive amount but it's just a little bit of extra insurance. I was ready to go back on. There we go. So, just had to get the right alignment. And what I will do is just try and push that seal onto the face. Next part, grease this one too. Same deal as with the big one. So making sure it comes through this face here. It's a bit difficult this side. This is a much smaller gap. That's why when you're in a workshop it's uh, nice to have the tool to force grease in. crap off of the washers. It's usually at least one washer to go in here. Spanner in the sun makes it nice and hot to burn my hands. So, at the moment, 
the grease isn't forced into the bearing so everything's sort of like pushed apart so what I do is get a bit of pressure on and turn it working the grease into the bearings now I do them up until to start with do this up tight yes. and now I can feel that there's tightness in those bearings that'll loosen up a little bit just do it up nice and tight and then that ensures that everything has been forced together okay and then back it right off and there's a bit of an art to this one so basically I can I can feel that nut just starting to grab and I can now see that there's alignment with the castellated nut and that hole there so that's the one I'm going to use now when we put the wheel on sometimes you can feel just a tiny little bit of slop in there you know it's not ideal but that's acceptable you don't really want to over tighten your bearings you know, it just causes them to wear fairly quickly Because you're not really over tightening, tightening that castellated nut, you've got to have some insurance in terms of your split pin. Okay, so it's on. Last but not least, our dust cap. So again, it's a press fit, so it's a bit of a, a skill. Just get it about square. Just touch it until you can feel it start to grip and then ease it in. So that's effectively how you change your bearing. So putting the brakes back on, putting the wheel back on, it's just a reverse order of what we did previously. Um, if you ever get stuck on the side of the road, set having changed your bearings once before and then having something like this is a real godsend it just makes life a lot easier and I haven't changed these things on the, on the side of the road on a highway before so um, and those things there have certainly come into their own I okay. uh, hope that helped um, and if you like the video please subscribe